Good evening to the president of my country, my place of birth, my land of hope, my motherland, the country that I so much love, the country I used to be proud to say is mine, the country I look forward to, that my sweat, my labor as a mother would surely reap. The president of this country stands several times to address us, we citizens. Most times we don't understand what you say. But for benefit of that, I'm going to go ahead to ensure that this conversation is printed on all pages of newspaper. So that if the president cannot... I'll drop Saying for the benefit of that, I'm going to ensure that this conversation is also printed in pages of newspaper. So that if the president cannot understand my words, you would be able to read clearly. Mr. President, you are the Commander in the Chief of the Armed Forces of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, but you have failed to protect me and my family. You are the Father of the Nation. You have failed to show sympathy and emotions and concerns when necessary. The wife of the President is supposed to be the mother of the nation. She has failed woefully in showing us who and what the power of a mother is. This is not the Nigeria we want. We didn't understand when you were telling us, assure you, I assure you, I assure you. You assured us, we didn't know you assured us failure. We didn't know you assured us killing. We didn't know you assured us suffering. We didn't know you assured us insecurity. We didn't know you assured us a worse education and medical system. We didn't know you assured us the worst yet to happen, broad daylight in our own face. I clearly say that I am disappointed in my president because you have failed to lead as expected. Age, they say, is nothing but a number. You are not the oldest president in the world. The president of Malaysia is far older than the president of this country, whether right or wrong age. But the president of Malaysia does not run helter skelter looking for medical attention in the name of family doctor. He has built his country, he has built his medical system, he has built insurance, he has built security and safety for his citizens, and he also benefits from it. The president of my country does not have an idea of the numbers of people that are being killed. The president of my country does not have an idea of the number of girls and children that have been kidnapped and raped on a daily basis. The president of my country does not understand the level of poverty an average man is living on. The president of my country does not understand what the exchange rate of this country has turned out to be. Yet, you fly, you fly planes going from one country to another, giving assistance to other countries, when your own motherland is burning, your own motherland was on a nose dive, but now it is completely gone. What do we have left? Nothing. No business is surviving, no business is thriving. Expatriates have gone. The order and the, the most lucrative business now is banditry, killing and kidnap. Mr. President, is this what you assured us? Mr. President, is this the country our children will grow in? Mr. President, is this the labor of our past heroes? You are so insensitive and unconcerned. That is what irritates me the most. You stand to address us without understanding the gravity or the consequences of what you say. This is a generation that wants change. This is a generation you cannot mess with. This is a generation that understands. Technology is everywhere. We see so many things. Even if you are not capable, your level of education does not make you capable to do things that are expected of this country at this age and time. Why not hire people who have the capacity to do it? Why surround yourself with liars and greedy men? Who think about what they want to steal and what they want to go home with and the lies they want to tell you. You are a father? Do you take time to speak to your children? 
the medical system of this country has so failed that people die every day out of negligence of practitioners or lack of equipment. Yet, we have people, we have looted funds that are being brought back into this country. We have Desiani's funds, we have Abacha's funds, we have Ibori's funds, we have so many funds. These monies are far more than what the president runs around to borrow. How do you intend to pay these debts? Nothing is functioning in this country. Mr. President, have you sold Nigeria? Let us know. An average citizen is dying in penury. You have so shamed us. Whether speeches have been written and given to you to read, or you write, you have shamed us locally and you have shamed us internationally, and we begin to ask ourselves, how did we get here? If this country is being controlled by political men, let us know. Because definitely, you are not the one in charge. We no longer have international respect. The people who have made Nigeria proud are the people who still believe in the strength of motherland. An average young child in Nigeria has taken his destiny back in his hands. Now our youths begin to do all sorts just to earn a living. Politicians live luxurious lives. And we, our monies and taxpayers are being spent. We finance this country. Every avenue tax is being laid, extortions are being made from the port to every corner of this country. How long do you want to continue to kill us morally? The president, how long do you want to continue to kill us financially? How long do you want to continue to kill us psychologically? It is not by force to rule. How much do you want? We can pay you so you can leave. And let's build a new Nigeria for our children. Enough of the killing during the exodus we have not forgotten. What is even happening now is worse than what happened in exodus. Who are we? Are we still Nigeria? Are we still Nigerians? We don't even know anymore. But you sit in the power. You sit in your office. That office should be called the office of shame. If the chief security officer of the Federal Republic of Nigeria can say they do not have enough ammunition to protect its citizens, what are you doing with our monies? What are you doing with the borrowed funds? Mr. President, I will drop my address and my full information so that if you want to arrest me or I'm going down for this, so be it. One thing I want to assure you our politicians and our present leaders and the liars surrounding them. This change will come. This change is near. This change is going to happen. There is nothing left. You people have showed your level of cowardice. You have showed your level of wickedness. You have showed your level of insensitivity from head to toe. But we know what we want for Nigeria. We know what we hope for our motherland. The labor of our past heroes saved us. But nothing has been done from your own dispensation. Mr. President, as the father that rules my country, I am ashamed that this is where you have pushed us. And I pray that sooner than you people think, this change will come.